Okay, so now I'm going to present you Autolong, which is uh, which was f uh, a project funded by the um, uh, National Science uh, Foundation in France, which was a s set of project called Investissement d'Avenir, looking for the future, they're very ambitious. And then, uh, next slide. And so the main characteristic of Autolang yeah, is that it is a project that is underpinned by a consortium of different laboratories. They, were, they are uh, laboratories specialized in science of language, language sciences, Atil in Nancy, LPL here in Aix-en-Provence, Modico in Paris, Orléans, uh, Paris, uh, Nanterre, and LL in Orléans. There are also labs working in the Ortolang project that are working on information technology, uh, Loria and INIST, and uh, also they ha they, they are, there is some expertise about information technology already in ATILF and LPL. And there are also, INIST is uh, specialized in uh, database management and especially management of access to scientific information, although the previous uh, resources center, CNRTL for uh, written language and SLDA for uh, or language and multimodal language uh, are also very well aware of management of access to scientific information. <coughs> so the, the lab in, in the beginning of the project have of course uh, had uh, of course a previous experience and so they already had some available resources in the different uh, centers. They had already tools they especially add some expertise about how to deal with oral language, written language, and preservation of the heritage language of, of France. And uh, also, uh, we had not at the very first, but as soon as we, we started, we, uh, Humanum was starting at the same time. And so, of course, we had to have some involvement and coherence with uh, the goals of uh, Humanum. And uh, also, uh, we had previous experience uh, on, with Clarine, which is uh, good. And uh, also, we had some uh, people involved with the project, DGLFLF, which is uh, um, an organization from a mystery of, of culture, which is preserving language in France in general and helping language, and BNF, which is a national uh, library in France, which is, uh, of course, uh, storing quite a lot of knowledge. And uh, so the goal of Fortelang was to have first uh, an infrastructure to manage, uh, store, uh, keep, and, uh, and broadcast all uh, resources about linguistic community uh, in, in France. So what we did was uh, follow the compliance uh, of uh, FX and Big Data uh, Charter. What we did very strongly was to try to uh, promote freedom of use of the resources for research. So we really wanted to put that uh, very strong, saying that uh, commercial use is, is not a problem. It's not uh, forbidden at all, but it's rather something that uh, different authors will do themselves, by themselves, and we would like to, pro to promote open access for all research. And also, we are working quite closely together with the Linguistic Consortium, so that uh, uh, Nicola told you a little bit about the consortium. That's a kind of network around the community. And in that network, we try to, to put forward good, uh, good method of working with data, with uh, format, with tools, and so on. And, uh, and we had a specific project with this consortium in the past years that was trying to finalize data. It means that there were quite a lot of projects, old projects in France, that c did create some data, that did create some corpora, and these were not available just because people had not the information of how to do it or people had some format that things that were not in proper format, that kind of things, or they needed a so small help to put things from old hard, hard disks, for example, and put it on the network. And so we worked with uh, the consortium of Humanum, and then we, we, were, uh, we were able to create, uh, so I think, to, to manage uh, some 10, I think, probably between 20 and 30 new corpora, thanks to that. And uh, also, we are working with a federation of uh, linguistics in France, which are networks of lab. 
And especially, for example, we've got a common project with one of them. They are using our uh, infrastructure to develop what they call French reference uh, corpus. Uh, so, uh, to sum it all, uh, our goal is to first to be able to identify and prepare the data. Uh, that means uh, we are uh, trying to help people to finalize and standardize data we are putting on uh, Ortolong, on the repository. Uh, we are trying to help them to put that in a format that will help to mutualize the data. Uh, so we, of course, uh, try to control and, uh, and validate uh, the tools and all the data that is uh, put on Autolong. And uh, finally, if it's possible, uh, we would like to be able to enrich the data whenever it's possible. A second main goal is uh, what we call long-term preservation of resources. Uh, there, we've got to separate two different things. Uh, at Autolong, we have uh, a server that is able to store uh, information from a computer information in, for a very long term. But that's uh, to be different, that's different from long-term archiving. Long-term archiving in France is a, server, a service that is specialized by the people that are specialized in archiving. It's a public archive in France. So in Autolong, we store uh, the data as it is deposit for a long, as long as our servers are going to be uh, still working. <laughs> but uh, all these data will be sent uh, to the specialized on long-term archiving in France. The service, the service that is handling this is the CNES. So this goes through Humanum to the CNES. The CNES is a digital uh, resources for long-term archiving in France, and they are uh, going to archive things that m people might be able to use in 500 years, something like that. And, uh, and we would like to help people to disseminate the data, so as the data to be able to, to be uh, seen, to be uh, downloaded, and to be reused, and so on. Uh, our server, all our servers are in the, at the INIST Institute in Nancy. Uh, we've got right now uh, six servers and we've got uh, more than 150 terabytes of uh, storage. And we've got, of course, uh, everything that is necessary to have a daily and uh, uh, backup. And uh, so what I wanted to, to present you, right, ah no, first first thing. So, uh, have, of course, we are accessible through various API. I'm going to present you a little bit about that. And uh, from the very first, and if it's not fully the case right now, we are going to improve it. Uh, we would like to be a Clarin compatible dissemination center. We already have uh, identification of each resources by a mean of a handle. Everything that is deposit, single uh, object, is identified by handle. We have a proof of integrity of the data uh, with a checksum link to the handle. Of course, we have uh, metadata and uh, that can be accessed in OAE PMH uh, that is in OLAC format. Uh, we have a version management of the data, which means that uh, each data which is deposited has a, number, uh, a version number. And if the data is modified, then you will have a new version number. So every data that is deposited at one time will always be available with uh, its version number. And we have authentication of users via a single sign-on mechanism, which is actually uh, targeting only the Education Research uh, Federation, Renater. So it means that everybody which, is, uh, which has right now an, an account in a French university or French lab and so on, can go and use Ortolang without uh, further uh, ado. Uh, so to present how uh, the website is working, uh, we have uh, designed something that uh, follow a five stage workflow. Uh, the first is deposition, then you're working on, on your data, then you are publishing your data. And when the data is published, it can be, of course, go to consultation or it can go to archiving. Uh, depositing the data means that uh, everybody who has, uh, can uh, go to Autolong can create its own account. 
uh, the account uh, will be a, a workspace, a workspace, or, uh, sorry, sorry, that the user can use as he wants. The workspace is in long-term uh, serious uh, computer storage, so it means that everything which is deposited on the workspace, even if it's not published, it's long-term uh, data. Uh, so it's very good for, for, example, for, for example, people who are starting their project. They can put the data right at the start of the project. As soon as they gather, for example, new data, they can put it, even though it might take a few years to, have f to finish the project. Uh, for example, this is the same for anybody who is doing a PhD thesis, for example. Uh, most students don't have access to long-term uh, storage in their environment, and this is uh, something that we that people can use. Uh, the way to deposit the data can be done by a web interface simply for data uh, that are smaller than one gigabyte. And then for larger data, or you have many, many things to deposit, you can use FTP. And of course, you can upload compressed file that will be uh, decompressed on the fly. Uh, this workspace that you are working on is a secure workspace. It means that uh, well, there is an online interface, of course. Uh, modification is possible. You can delete your data. You can modify your data. Uh, the data is, is backed daily. There are some online tools. Uh, but especially the, data, the access to the data is restricted to the member of a group, yourself, and the exact number of people that you, uh, you put in your group. So this is not uh, something large. This is for small working groups. And then, uh, as soon as your data is ready, it can take uh, several days, several months, or maybe several years, you will go to publication phase. So publication phase, I think it's the part where uh, Ortolong is the most closely linked to uh, the fact that you are uh, working for linguistic community. Uh, any kind of data you are depositing or autolong, uh, from a technical point of view, can be a, a, any, any kind of uh, format. Uh, of course, we are uh, normally working better with the linguistic community, so we have processes to deposit corpus, to deposit tools, to deposit lexicon, to deposit te thesaurus. And then, at the publication uh, time, what we do is try to moderate in, this, in the meaning of if you have been depositing data that are linguistic data, you are going to look at are the format, the kind of format that everybody use, are, uh, of course, is all the metadata clearly uh, filled, uh, clearly available. And so we are not uh, doing a moderation in sense of uh, trying to find out whether the, the data is interesting or not. You are only moderating in the sense that we try to have the right format for long-term archiving, the right format for the linguistic community, or any kind of a format if people want to deposit other kind of data, it's why, why not possible? Um, so as soon as moderation is ended, uh, then uh, you've got to a publication of the data. And uh, the moderation is handled uh, right now, but by uh, ATILF, uh, SLDA, and uh, us in, at Modico. So archiving, as I said before, it's sending the data through uh, what we call in French the pipeline. And we, we like to use an English word for that. Uh, to the archive uh, organization in France. So then it goes to Emalum and then to archiving process. So this is not our goal in Ortolong to do that. We just send the data and that's, uh, this is uh, on the hands of the people that are uh, working on archiving. And, uh, and finally, of course, all the data which is available can be browsed, can be reused, can be downloaded, and so on. No worries, I've seen it. And uh, the data can be consulted by, uh, via a web interface. Uh, it can be uh, find through or IPMH. And um, it, it, you've got several uh, ways to put uh, authorization of use for your data. 
you can have data which is available for anyone and then all this data will be available directly for to anyone that goes to the web website you can have data which is available only i need five ten seconds more seconds that go uh, for only the people identified so identify in a website or you may might have data which is only for people for research uh, science so these people have to be signed on on the, the science uh, website and that's all uh, I, I just forgot to say some two very important things at least for us French because it's a very touchy subject is that we suggest strongly to the people that put the data to say what kind of citation of their work they want to have uh, there is a way to cite, uh, of course, the, the handle. The handle is a unique uh, identifier. And, uh, of course, if you, uh, if you cite a data that you are using, uh, you've got that reference. And, of course, we ask people to follow the license condition that they have been put on the website. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Christophe. So maybe we, can, uh, we have time for, for, for some questions. Uh, yes, please. So, please, uh, uh, um, if you can, present yourself in, in a few words. Uh, yeah. Um, Arjan uh, uh, Claria, Netherlands. Um, I'm looking really forward to that, that you're joining, uh, Clarin. Um, but I have a question. Looking to all the software and, and, and watching your websites uh, and, and things like that, I was wondering, um, all the is the main language will be French. Is that also for all the tools and all the interfaces um, that you provide? Uh, right now, it's very simple. It's French and English, okay. right now. Yeah, but and that's the, then the website. Later on, wait, the website, yes, yes. But the tools? Uh, ah, the tools, yeah, the tools, that's a very good question. Because uh, when we started the project, uh, we said very strongly that uh, it was a project for a French language. And that was only on the meaning that we, if we had to develop automatic processing tools, we will do this only for French. Yeah. But that's all. I mean, if uh, so, the automatic tools that are on the website are mostly uh, automatic tools that work on French, that's clear. Uh, but then I think uh, probably in the future we might be open. Uh, there's no reason why we can we not use tools that uh, can deal with another language. But right now, of course, I think uh, there are some tools that deal in format, that kind of things, so of course, that can be used for any, any language. But when it's automatic processing, mostly it has been deposited by people from the French community, and that's mostly for French language, well, yes. Okay, but in case I, I want to do some collaboration between, for example, uh, German, Dutch, and French newspapers, and I want to find out if there's an, an, a difference or something like that, that there is a possibility that we can do it in, in English as well. I mean, yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah, okay, uh, I would like that. <laughs> Thank you. you. Other questions? You mentioned that um, you have a self de depositing service in excuse some me. way. Excuse, excuse me, can you present yourself, please? Oh, my, yeah. my name is Thorsten Triple from the from Claren, Germany. Um, so your uh, repository is basically based on a self-depositing service. What kind of description do you require the user for depositing data? If not, what's the difference between your service and Dropbox? And um, yeah, and how do you make sure that uh, data is actually entering the publication process? I mean, most researchers never finish a corpus. Uh, so there is no such thing than a finished corpus. Um, so how do you make sure that it's not sticking in the private uh, uh, side of everything for eternity without any description, not being able to find it with any other tools such as the VLO because it's not openly available or the, uh, the metadata is not available at all? That's uh, interesting and tricky questions. Uh, well, for the first question, um, it's not that different from Drop Dropbox. It's not different until the time when you've got uh, the, the publication process. When you go for a publication process, then we are going to look at the data and trying to find, is it, I would say, uh, data that is that makes sense. I don't think that we have many people that are 
connected to Autolong that are not people belonging to the uh, research uh, of France. Uh, you could, you, you can right now, if you want, as a German, for example, go to Ortolang, ask uh, to have a, a account, and you will have it because we, we will not. Uh, we know that many people from foreign countries want to access the website, and so we just have to to sign on the website, and then it's possible, and then you will be able to deposit data in uh, any kind of data you want. So this will be checked if check is necessary at the time of the publication. And will the publication be able to check anything, any kind of information? I think not, but I think no, no, no system can do it. Uh, for the second thing, uh, this is very interesting because this is the kind of things that you are talking quite a lot about in the consortium. The consortium, where well, I belong to a consortium of linguistics, so I'm in a board, so I know about it. Uh, many people talk about that. Talk about the thing that first many data have been, I'll say, uh, created and never deposit and so on. And so what I answer is the two things. First, that we try uh, first to educate the community, saying that if you do not deposit your data, you will never, never be cited. You will never have citation. You will never have people working with you. And most people say, oh, no, I don't want that. So they, they tend to deposit. We got our previous experience, what I was talking about, the help to finalize the project. We seen that we, we got some like 40, 50 answers, people saying, yes, I want, I have data, I want to deposit the data, not because I want to hide the data, uh, it's not why I kept them. I kept the data because I was just not obliged to deposit, or I was not, I did not have the time or the money to do it. But right now, but you have this website available or too long, uh, and it's also true for SLDR, huh? uh, that uh, say the data, as soon as it is deposited, it is available for everyone. You have uh, uh, got a reference, you can cite the data, and also people do the deposit thing. And the third thing is that we decided at Ortolong, this is something that we need to discuss with the consortium, things like you cannot keep your data in private space more than two years. After two years or one year, we are not fully decided on the time. I think if it's a PhD, we can say four years, for example. If it's a, a, a project uh, that has, for example, three years of time, we can say three years. But what we are going to do, one year after the project is supposed to be ended, if you get private data, then you say either you publish it, either or either we delete it. That's all. We are, uh, we are it's in our charter. In our charter, we say that we are a public project, so we cannot do uh, storage for private use. I mean, uh, if we had much more money, we could do it, no, no worries. But as we have not, and as we are funded by the French uh, research uh, government, when we say that we will not keep the data more than a certain amount of time. We'll see in a few years' time, I will, I will tell you how many people we had to, I, I think, uh, my, my experience is that for at least 90% of these people, they would say, oh, sorry, I will publish it, uh, most of the time. Just to add some few words about that, you know, the French community is not really used to publish data. But now with the H2020 project, when you need a data management plan, that means that there is something, there is a reward for that, in a way. So now they begin to understand that uh, maybe data citation could be something interesting for the career, but it's just a beginning in France. And uh, as of long, when we people are publishing something in Numanum, for instance, we ask for metadata. Even if it's not a lot, we ask for metadata in order to publish and to disseminate, disseminate uh, the existence of this data. But they can disseminate the metadata and say that the data is private. We, we can do that. Because there is a, always a, a time when it's not easy to publish all your data. So thank you. And uh, thank you, Christophe. Yes. Thank you very much.